Welcome back defenders, Jake here. In my last update video we talked about these civilian cargo ships choosing to defy Russia's blockade in the Black Sea. At least half a dozen ships have ignored Russia's warnings and were headed for a Ukrainian port on the Danube River. This article was from two days ago and here on the channel for weeks I've been saying Russia is not going to fire on these ships. One of the ships was flying an Israeli flag. Russia views Israel as a neutral country. One of the ships was flying a Greek flag. Greece belongs to NATO. One of the ships was flying a Georgian flag. At the moment, Russia still views Georgia as a friendly country. So firing on these ships and killing their civilian crews, I don't think Russia is going to do that. Instead, Russia just wants to bomb the ports so these ships can't load any grain. Russia hits Ukraine export route near Romania. So these are the smaller ports on the Danube River on the border with Romania. Here's a tweet from Ukraine's Ministry of Defense. More than 40,000 tons of grain were damaged by a Russian attack on the city of Ismail. This is South Odessa. This grain could have fed millions of people in China, Israel, and many African countries. Terrorists use starvation as a weapon. Russia has demonstrated this once more. So Ukraine is not going to go hungry. Ukraine has plenty of food. Russia's objective here is to starve the people of mostly Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, in the hopes it'll cause political instability around the world and Somehow that will lead to concessions for Russia. So here's a video from the port city of Ismail on the Danube River. This is what it currently looks like. Iranian Shahid drones, Iskander missiles, Caliber cruise missiles, Onyx missiles. Russia is doing everything it can to destroy this food. There is a video. This is from the Romanian side of the river. This is only a couple hundred meters from NATO territory that Russia is choosing to launch these missiles to destroy the port infrastructure. So let's check in with Solvyov. What are his thoughts? on Russia's master plan to destroy the food security of the entire world. This is what he says about the port attacks. Well, the situation is interesting. It shows that we have entered a phase when all the predictions of Western analysts have not come true, okay? When the level of grievance against American political elites may lead to Ukraine losing its support. It's never going to happen, Solvyov. The United States, the European Union, the G7, we are never going to stop uh, supporting Ukraine. So your military might as well go back to their own country. He continues, on the other hand, it is clear that we are moving to the next stage. There is no grain deal. So Ukraine doesn't need ports. And the issue of the Black Sea should be solved in the same way as the issue of the Azov Sea. What he's referring to is the complete destruction of the city of Mariupol. Every building, 90% of the city was completely destroyed. Tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians were killed. This is Solvyov's final solution for the Black Sea. Destroy every city along the coastline until Russia's ground forces can take these cities. Of course, it is a pity about historical buildings but it's not the first time in the history of our country. We will rebuild them better than they were. 
So he just brags about how Russia has done this in the past, destroying national treasures, historical buildings, UNESCO heritage sites. And then once their ground forces can take the land, they'll just rebuild it and pretend like they're not the evil ones who destroyed it in the first place. Erdogan urges Putin not to escalate Ukraine war tensions. I don't think Erdogan has a problem with the ports being bombed, but he does have a problem with civilian ships being fired on. So Russia's not at that point where they're going to fire on a ship. The Russians are dumb enough that on state TV they admitted they might use submarines to release mines in the paths of these ships, then blame Ukraine and say it was a Ukrainian mine. It's probably not smart to advertise your method of hybrid warfare on Kremlin state TV. So Erdogan is doing his best to restore the terms of the Black Sea grain deal. I don't know why he's confident and thinks this is possible. But we do have signals that Russia wants to return to Black Sea grain deal talks. And Russia, of course, is making absurd demands that this ammonium pipeline going through Ukraine, that they're the ones who damaged, needs to be restored in order for them to return to the Black Sea grain deal. Russia has also demanded that their agriculture bank be reconnected to the SWIFT network so they can move money in and out. It's not going to happen. So here's what I think Russia wants to do. I think Russia wants to spend one to three months bombing these ports, destroying hundreds of thousands of tons of food. They want to destroy the grain elevators. They want to destroy the harbors and the docks. They want to completely cripple Ukraine's ability to export agricultural products. And then they're going to say, we want to return to the grain deal. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for Ukraine to return to the grain deal after all their port cities and port infrastructure has been destroyed. But Russia's going to do it, and then they're going to say Ukraine is being unreasonable, not returning to the grain deal after Russia got it out of their system, bombing their ports as much as possible. That's my working theory. We'll see what Russia says and does over the next couple months. Ukraine situation reports. Kyiv changes counteroffensive tactics. Ukraine is reverting to wearing down the Russians with artillery instead of plunging into minefields under fire. So yes, the Ukrainian counteroffensive is still ongoing, but the objective at the moment is not to grab territory. The minefields are too difficult to proceed through them with armored vehicles. You have to go slowly. You can't proceed through minefields slowly when Russian artillery is waiting for you. So Ukraine's number one objective on the front lines right now is to seek out and destroy Russian artillery as well as hitting troop concentrations. And Ukraine is pretty good at it. Ukrainian HIMARS strike takes out 200 Russian troops gathered on a beach. This is kind of a hilarious story. Let me show you on the map where this took place. Here's the city of Kherson. This is kind of a peninsula slash island, depending on the time. And the Russians are pretty dumb. Uh, the commander of this group, uh, every day, at the same time, had his soldiers assemble on the beach in formation. Some kind of roll call to make sure everyone is still there and not drunk. And Ukrainian reconnaissance drones observed this, that Russian troops were gathering in mass on this beach at the same time every day. They set their watches, and then they high mars these guys to oblivion. This is what the peninsula looks like. I mean, these troops probably thought they had it pretty nice uh, lounging around on this beach. People normally pay good money for that, but uh, these Russian soldiers didn't get the vacation they were hoping for. I'll link the video down below if you want to watch the actual high mars strike on the beach. General Staff, Russian counterattacks at Star Mayorsky and around Bakhmut continue to fail. Russian forces made unsuccessful attempts to regain lost positions near Star Mayorsky and, and Bakhmut. So if you were worried, don't be worried. 
Russia's ground forces are still incompetent. They have an army of slaves that lack morale and motivation. So no, the Russian ground forces aren't going to be doing much for the rest of this war. But the landmines are a serious problem. The artillery is a serious problem. I don't think there's going to be any dramatic shift in the front lines over the next month. Ukraine's objective, seek out and destroy artillery and troop concentrations. GLSDB hopefully should be arriving in September. I'm most excited about that new weapon system, and we'll see how that changes the battlefield. This is a crazy story. Russians are being tricked into setting fire to enlistment offices. Authorities are now investigating the potential involvement of organized groups or a network of scammers manipulating individuals into carrying out these acts. These videos are all over social media. This is wild. Twelve military enlistment offices across Russia have been set on fire. And you would think, are these people upset about the war? People upset about their loved ones being taken away? No. It's because they're being scammed into doing so. These stories are insane. So this man who threw a Molotov cocktail at a recruitment office said he claimed he was lured into taking out multiple loans and then coerced by a person pretending to be an FSB officer who promised to help clear his debts in exchange for setting fire to the offices. Similar stories emerged from other regions of Russia. A 24-year-old teacher was detained after throwing a Molotov cocktail at a military enlistment office, sharing a similar story about taking out loans and being told loans would be forgiven. Uh, in this village, a 17-year-old girl attempted to set fire to an enlistment office who falsely claimed that there was a traitor within the office transmitting information to Ukrainian intelligence about the local residents. So is it really that easy? I mean, has Russian propaganda beaten these people of Russia down so badly that they can easily be duped into these kinds of scams? But the videos online, I'll, I'll link them in the pinned comment down below. There's, once again, dozens of recruitment offices across Russia with people throwing Molotov cocktails uh, through the windows. Here's another video. Once again, I'll link it down below. Defense Ministry Belarusian helicopters violate Polish airspace. I don't think this is a big story. I don't think NATO wants to make this into a big deal. Poland rightfully is very upset that Belarus held a military exercise on their border and then accidentally crossed into their airspace and flew over this village on the Polish side of the border. So there's two possibilities. One, these Belarusian helicopter pilots are incompetent and they accidentally flew over the border. Or two, more likely, this was a deliberate provocation. The Belarusian military just wanted to see what would happen. What would be the response? I don't think these pilots wanted to be shot down, but they are testing Poland, testing NATO, showing provocations so that their own people have something to crow about. And uh, I don't mention Lukashenko often these days, but here's a three-minute clip of him speaking to his people, and I want to read for you just a little bit of what, what he's telling his people about all these Wagner mercenaries coming to his country. I emphasize one more time, it was my initiative, and I don't regret it, and I want to leave them as part of the armed forces of our country. Just a reminder that the Wagner Group, these are thousands of ex-convicts and neo-Nazis from Russia invited to camp in the woods outside some Belarusian towns. <laughs> and starting at this point, I want to work on creating a contact army more actively. We have conscripts. He comes, serves for a year and a half, and then leaves. Obviously, I was like that too. Inexperienced 18-year-old guys come, serve, and then leave the Belarusian military. But there, they have experienced guys. 
mostly officers. Their profession is to fight and to defend a country. That's cute. He thinks the Wagner Group cares about Belarus. They say it's even cheaper. That's why we're looking at their experience so we could protect ourselves in the future. This is our only goal. The only goal. (laughs) So don't worry. Don't worry. We're not striving for war. I think all will be normal. If the enemy will think we will respond and they will suffer irreparable losses that they can't afford, they will never attack us. This is the basics of military business. So Potato Lukashenko is telling his people, I invited thousands of Russian ex-convicts to camp in the woods for your protection, because I love you. It'll be a strong deterrence against NATO attacking Belarus. Isn't the point of having nuclear weapons on your territory deterrence? What do you need the Wagner Group for, uh, Potato Lukashenko? (laughs) I don't... This guy's an idiot. And absolutely nobody cares about the Wagner Group anymore. Uh, After their failed rebellion, in which they killed a bunch of pilots, uh, surprise, surprise, these uh, cemeteries that... Purgosian set up to honor the fallen, you know, the convicts who died in the meat wave attacks taking Bakhmut, all of these cemeteries are falling into disrepair. It's being reported that uh, the cemeteries are in terrible condition, graves of mercenaries are starting to sink into the ground, and nobody is caring for these um, cemetery plots. Yeah, more than likely these cemeteries are just going to get paved over for a strip club parking lot. That seems to be the trend in Russia. War for Identity. Kiev pulls down the hammer and sickle from the giant World War II statue. So in the center of Kiev, this is the Motherland Monument. And activists in Ukraine are trying to rename the monument. They want to call it the Mother Ukraine Monument. And on the shield... This week, they successfully took down the old Soviet communist hammer and sickle. This is a symbol of genocide, a symbol of repression, a symbol of Russian imperialism, and 100% it's the correct thing to do to take it down, and they're going to replace it with the Ukrainian trident. So what this war is all about, Ukraine is finally freeing itself from centuries of Russian imperialism, hundreds of years ago, I don't know the day, uh, but the Russian Empire absorbed Ukraine, absorbed the Ukrainian people, and the goal was always russification, genocide, erase the Ukrainian culture, identity, language, heritage, just make them Russian, so that the Kremlin can more easily control these people. And Ukraine has had enough. This is their true war of independence. Yes, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Ukraine became an independent state. But they didn't have to fight for it. And the Russians thought that this would be a three-day special limited military operation. So as all these old Soviet Russian symbols are removed from their society, Russia claims they're the victim losing their empire, losing their colonies. Uh, So here is the incredible reaction on Kremlin State TV to the Soviet hammer and sickle being taken off the shield. These people are psychopaths. So at the end of World War I, when the, uh, the Russian Empire collapsed, In the 1920s, the Bolsheviks rebranded, saying we've got this brand new philosophy, it's great, you're going to love it, it's called communism, and they rebranded the Russian Empire as the Soviet Empire. Fast forward 50 years, 
everyone hates communism. Everyone hates the Soviet Empire. The Soviet Empire collapses. And Russia decides to rebrand again. And in the 90s, there was a moment, there was an opportunity where all was forgiven. As long as the Russians just agreed to become a normal, peaceful society that would give up their imperial past, then people were willing to overlook a lot of genocide and a lot of atrocities that the Soviets committed. But Putin and the oligarchs, they're not happy with that. They think imperialism is great, colonialism is great, and they want to reconstitute their empire, rebranding as the Russian Federation. But it's not going as well as they planned. And the Russian economy continues to deteriorate. The Russian ruble, over the last month, has lost 10% of its value. So here is US dollars to Russian rubles. It's currently one US dollar to 94 Russian rubles. Going back in time to just December, six or seven months ago, it was 60 Russian rubles to one US dollar. Now, to understand the actual percent decline of their currency, you have to switch it to rubles to dollars. Here's the chart over the last one year. The Russian ruble has lost 35% of its value. It's only going to get worse. Russia is running massive def deficits every single month. They don't have access to the international bond market. Nobody will loan them money. Once they burn through all their reserves, all they can do is make the money printer go burr. Final couple feel-good clips I have for you. The first one is people trying to show their support for Ukraine in France. So these activists decided to get on the top of this train to fly a Ukrainian flag in front of the Eiffel Tower. Very powerful gesture, but please don't risk your life and break any laws trying to sh show your support for Ukraine. Final clip I have for you, this is actually from a couple months ago, but we're talking about sports a lot recently and how there shouldn't be a requirement for Ukrainian athletes to shake hands with aggressors against their states. So I think this was from June, and this is a powerlifting world competition. Uh, a Ukrainian man came in first. A man from Iran came in third. And this powerlifter refused to shake his hand. Please stand for the national anthem of Ukraine. So this Iranian powerlifter is confused. Um, I don't blame the Iranian people for the actions of their government, but the situation in Russia is different. Since mobilization, since the war began, the Russian people are complicit in the actions of their government. They are participating in this war, willingly letting themselves be drafted, conscripted, mobilized. In my opinion, that's the difference, but... If Ukrainian athletes don't want to shake hands with Iranian athletes because their government is providing kamikaze drones, um, that's their decision, that's their choice. I support Ukraine. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth. Keep defending democracy.